my stuff in for you. Why? Well, because I've made a few decisions about where my life is going and where it's been, and I, uh, I just got to get... This is the toughest toast I've ever had. I think I've got to get used to it. But don't eat it. It's okay. It's all right, Mom. Cool it. What plans have you made? Well, I'm going to get a place of my own, and then I'll be able to get on with my life. What's the hurry? Mom, look, I know this isn't ha hasn't been fair for you. I mean, you've got your work, you've got your own life, and I've come in and put all my problems right in your lap. Well, you know I want to help any way I can. I know you do, and I appreciate that. This is just something I've got to do. Well, there's something I've got to ask you. What? Are you going to uh, take this apartment alone, or does Mitch Blake go along with the lease? Could you tell me, please, what's so important that you're to drag me over here at this unearthly hour? You know what it's like to work in a club. I didn't get out of the connection till 3 this morning. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to do that, Jason, but I want your uh, inestimable advice. I rented a studio I want you to look at. A studio? A studio. Yeah, since you're one of the best businessmen in town, I wanted to say good Oh, that's true. Okay. So true. Right. All right, will you? Where is he? Relax, Joey. It's still early. Come on, will you just sit down and be patient? Look, are you sure she's all right? I, everything that I know, I told you. Melissa said that she's all right. That's but you all. haven't seen her? No. Is, you think Brian could do anything? Well, I think that he can go to Zachary Colton. Okay, Zachary Colton's not going to do a thing, Jerry. Come on. We don't know that. Now, maybe he can convince Colton to open an investigation into Jordan's little contracts, starting... With Blaine's beating. And maybe Colton and Jordan are a little too close for that. If Jordan has anything on Colton, debts or favors, he's going to use them now. All I know is that we have to go through official channels. You can't get to these guys through official channels, Jerry. Good morning, Jerry. Joey, what brings you both here at this time of day? We need to talk to you, Brian. Well, it sounds serious. Uh, Blaine is in a jam. Sam, we were thinking that... We may finally have something to use against Jordan Scott. What? Jordan's received information that I believe we can use to demand that the district attorney investigate Jordan Scott. And now, the continuing story of Another World. If that's what you mean, he's going to be staying at the sporting life, and the children and I will be at the apartment. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Brian told me yesterday that Mitch and I have to keep our distance until the divorce is filed. Well, I know how you feel about him. It's going to be hard for you. Mitch and I want to start a life together as soon as possible, but not the, at the expense of losing Amanda. It's too big a price to pay. So we'll just have to take it slowly. Is Brian worried about it? He says he doesn't want me to do anything that would tip the scales in Max's favor. It's going to be hard enough to win this as it is. Mac loves that little girl, Rachel. I know how he feels, but she belongs with me. I'm her mother and she needs me. You know, these things are... Always bad for everybody, but the children. They get caught right in the middle every time. It just isn't fair. I'm worried about how it's going to affect her. She's still pretty young. She'll adjust. I hope you're right. How long does uh, Brian think all this is going to take? He doesn't say. But Mitch and I have been apart this long. A little more time won't make that much difference. It could, you know. Mom, 
I'm not going to do anything to jeopardize my chances of getting past the demon man, and not for anything or for anyone. What kind of information? Melissa and Needham came over to my apartment and told me that Jordan had beaten up Blaine pretty bad. What? Is she all right? Yeah, we think so. Melissa said that Jordan just wanted to remind Blaine of the hold he has over her now. Jordan's done things a lot worse than that. A lot worse. Melissa also overheard a very incriminating conversation between Jordan Scott and one of his men. She said that they were talking about the bombing of Corey Publishing. Is she sure that's what she heard? She is positive. They were even talking about where the charges were set. One was in the loading dock area, one was in the printing plant, and the third one was in Mac's office. Can she identify the man he was talking to? She says not. She's afraid for her life if she crosses Scott. But, Brian, if we can pull Scott in on this thing with Blaine, then maybe somebody will come forward and tell us what they know. Well, you may be right, Jerry. Sometimes these things work like a, a chain reaction. Jerry was thinking that we should go to the DA. I'll go see him today. Tell him about Blake. You think he'll do anything? I'm not sure, Joey. You know, I'd be less than honest if I told you I expected his full cooperation. Well, Mitch, I think the uh, first place for a studio or a gallery is just perfect. What about the apartment? Operation and kids. That's cozy. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not staying here. Why not? I just don't think it's a good idea now. Well, uh, what do you mean by a good idea? Good for whom? You or Rachel? For neither one of us. Well, she isn't having second thoughts, is she? No, no. It's just a matter of uh, finalizing her divorce. Okay, I'm, I'm just concerned. Don't be. We're taking care of ourselves. In the meantime, if you don't mind, I'm going to stay the sporting life. I'm sure that's no problem with me, but uh, I don't know how Jordan Scott's going to like it. Why is that a problem? Well, uh, no, I, um, I just guess when you have bad chemistry or something, I can handle it. Is that all? Well, you can be dangerous, Mitch. Look, if it's going to cause any trouble or No, no, please, don't worry. I, I'll take care of it. I'll handle Scott. Okay, we've done a deal. Good. So what do you think of this place? I think it's very nice. Very nice. Hey, what's in here? It's a dark room. I told you I used to uh, shoot some. And I'm thinking about starting to do it professionally. I've got a portfolio here if you'd like to see what I can do. Disappointed in Sally here. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm feeling Sally was a problem. This was the other. Well, I asked her to move in with me. I thought we'd get an apartment of our own. A lot of guys at school have apartments with their girlfriends. It'd be pretty hard to uh, concentrate on your grades, wouldn't it? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. She turned me down. She's got more sense than you have. Well, it really meant a lot to me. Well, I'm sure it did, honey, but you got to be realistic. I mean, you can't afford an apartment on a part-time salary. Well, let's not even talk about it. I mean, she won't move in with me. Okay? I get the feeling that uh, 
Sally isn't really what's got you down. You might think that Denny might be at the bottom of this. How did you know? Well, it doesn't take a genius to feel the tension between you two at supper the other night. Oh, now's, now's the part where you tell me that I should give Denny another chance, right? That he only has my best interest in mind? Well, Denny doesn't know anything about me. He doesn't know what's right for me or good for me, Ada. He just wants to throw his weight around, play big brother. Look, don't put words in my mouth. I mean, if you tell me that you have problems on account of Denny, I believe you. Well, it's nice to know someone's on my side, thanks. Well, if you want to talk about it, I'll listen. Well, it goes back a long way, but I don't know. Maybe if Pop was around, things would be different. Yeah, maybe. But you can't change the past, and you have to live with what's happening now. I don't know. Well, look, if things get too rough over at the house, you know, why don't you come over and stay here? You wouldn't mind? No, I wouldn't mind. Come on over whenever you like. Stay as long as you like. <laughs> Too busy for a visit with your sister? Oh, of course not. Good to see you. <laughs> what a nice surprise. Come on, we'll sit down. I need a break. Oh, good. Oh. You recovered from wedding fever yet? <laughs> Oh, I guess so. But it was a beautiful day, wasn't it? It was perfect. Aunt Liz even sobbed quietly so everyone could hear the wedding vows. <laughs> I hope the kids are having a wonderful honeymoon. <laughs> what young people wouldn't. Alice, tell me, do you think that all the guests had a good time? You know, you worry too much. <laughs> they all seem to. Well, with the possible exception of Mac. Seeing Rachel there and having to deal with all the problems he's having is really taking its toll on him. I saw him yesterday. He was very low. I'm not surprised. It's not only the family matters, but the business has been very chaotic lately. And with all this office reconstruction, it's very hard to get out, meet schedules with these makeshift facilities and equipment. You know, Mac has always been so generous and giving. I wish there was something we could do to make him... Well, to help him through this time. Maybe there is. Yeah. I could give a, a small dinner party. It might be nice for him to get out a bit. Mm, I'm not sure he'd be up to being around a lot of people. Well, it wouldn't be a lot of people. It'd be just uh, maybe you and Mac, me, Brian. Brian? Yeah. Me and Brian have been friends for so many years. Oh, I see. You're inviting Brian for Mac. Well, yes. I think Mac might feel uncomfortable with some other people. Pat, is something going on between you and Brian? No. Brian and I are very good friends, and we see each other socially, but nothing is going on. Okay, okay. I won't ask any more questions, I promise. But I think the idea of a dinner party is terrific. It may be exactly what Mac needs right now. Yeah, you could say that. As a matter of fact, I've been trying to decide whether I should go back to the complex at all. No, uh, come on, let's go ahead. No, 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 keep, do what you're doing. I don't know when those were big on Amanda. my responsibilities as a brother. The board of directors has also asked Mac to remove me as publisher of the ledger. Why? I wrote an editorial on Zachary Colton. The one that rang last week? I read that. That was terrific. Of course, you know how I feel about him. I wouldn't put anything past him. Yeah, well, I pulled the one that Philip wrote and ran mine instead. Well, yeah, but honey, that's your prerogative as a Yes, it is. is. When I accused Colton of having ties with Jordan Scott, well, he threatened to add us with a libel suit. Yes, but how do you have proof for your editorial, didn't you? I didn't, but I know I'm right. 
Zachary Cole has been very close to Jordan Scott for a very long time. Who knows what he owes him? Not only in debts, but in favors. I mean, why else would he turn his back on the investigation of the dock site? The, the bombing at the complex. Jerry Groves hit and run. Who knows what else? And now he wants to be mayor. Right. So I have ruined his good name and threatened his political career. Well, obviously, you've performed a great service to the community. Well, believe me, Mom. I mean, everything I wrote in that editorial is true. I didn't even scratch the surface. Yes, but honey, without any proof, it's just words. Yeah, I know, I know. The board of directors made that very clear to me last week. Did Matt go along with the board? Yes, he did. I think now would be uh, the best time for me to leave court publishing. Honey, that's not an answer. Why do you think I should just stay out? Yes, of course you can't just walk away from your career. My career? What is left of my career? That's not true, no, Jane. No, no, you haven't seen what's been happening, Mom. Now, everything I touch, I ruin. Really, I mean, I work on something and it just falls apart. I can't keep on top of it. Honey, Mac has always told me how pleased and proud he is of all of the work you've done know, in the Mom. complex. Listen, that was true at one time, but it's not anymore. Because of what's been happening, I, I, I feel that I've let him down as a son. That's not possible. No, no. I think he loves you too much. Look, I wanted to show him that I could carry on for him. I've always wanted to be like him. Jamie, don't you know he knows that? And you know how proud that's made him feel? Listen to me. He loves you so much, there's no way on earth you could disappoint him. Mom, that is not all. There are other things. I haven't been a husband to Cecile. I mean, you thought she was wrong for me? Well, I think it's the other way around. Oh, I sorry. haven't even been a good son to you, Honey, Mom. stop this. Now, this isn't like you at all. You're just feeling sorry for yourself. Now, you listen to me. You're the best son anyone could ever ask for. And what do I owe the honor of this visit? Base it is Royal Counselor here in my, my home chamber. chamber. Please. Please. Save, Save your, your sarcasm, sarcasm for someone, someone who appreciates it. Sorry. What's on your mind? Have, uh, have you seen Blaine Ewing recently? Mm, Blaine? No. No, have No. Well, she's been beaten. She what? Yes, physically beaten. And I think Jordan Scott is responsible. That's a pretty serious accusation. Has she pressed charges? No. But I think your office should look into it. Well, come on, Brian. I mean, domestic quarrels are hardly under the jurisdiction of the district attorney. I mean, Blaine's going to have to go to the police and file a report and, and then let them do an investigation. Don't you see, Colton? Uh, your office must have been suspicious of Jordan Scott's operation for some time. Now, if Blaine knows anything, she may cooperate in return for protection. I gather that Blaine isn't willing to talk about this, is that it? No. She says she fell on the stairs. I don't know that there's anything anybody can do until she files a complaint. But if she's not willing to do that, then... Well, I'm sorry to have wasted your time. Brian, come on. I mean, falling on the stairs, although painful, is hardly a criminal action. Oh, there you are. You know, I have better things to do than just come running here on your beck and call. Thank you so much for coming, Cecile. Won't you sit down? Well, I hope this is important. I don't appreciate being interrupted and taken away from my responsibilities on a whim. Well, I assure you, this is not a whimsical meeting. I found some very serious errors in the next issue of Bravo, and I'd like to discuss them with you before it goes to print. Won't you sit down? Cecile, I think it would be good for you, for both of us, and for the magazine, if we could uh, try to get along with each other. So could we put aside our personal differences for a minute? Uh, you can keep your olive branch, Pat. Now, what did you say about errors? Well, perhaps heirs is the wrong word. It's, it's really a matter of taste. Bad judgment, I think. 
For example, what was going on in your head when you put that layout together? Pat! I'm experimenting with a new format. Why this? This could lead to a whole new look for the magazine. I like the old look, Cecile. Yes, I know you do. But the sales and the circulation figures have proven that my innovations are effective. Come on, Pat. We want to keep the magazine from being stale, don't we? Cecile, I don't want you to do anything so drastic as that without consulting me first. You're really getting a kick out of this, aren't you? You actually enjoy humiliating me at the expense of the magazine. Well, I am not going to let you get away with this. Cecile, what are you going to do? Run to Mac and tell him that I don't like your layouts? And you look a little silly. No. I think I'm going to keep you guessing as to what I'm going to do. Well, I won't lose any sleep over it. Don't become too comfortable with all this newfound power, Pat. Because if I have anything to say about it, and I do, it won't last for long. Hey, Jerry, no, he said I can find you in here. Oh, Mary, I'll be with you in a minute. Hey, are you okay? Yeah. I'm okay. It's Blaine I'm worried about. Have you seen her? Yeah, she's at the hospital. You should have seen what that animal did to her. I nearly ran over there. Hey, take it easy. I think I may have something that will make you feel a little better. Hey, there's nothing that's going to cheer me up. You go ahead and tell me then, all right? Brian has gone over to talk to Zachary Colton. Colton? Yeah. What for? We are trying to get the district attorney to start a formal investigation of Jordan Scott. Oh, well, that's supposed to cheer me up? Well, I hoped it would. Well, I sure didn't expect Colton to champion our cause. You know, I've seen him and Jordan slap each other on the back just one too many times. Joey said the same thing. You know, see, I think Zachary's into Jordan for a lot of money. But I can't prove it, Jerry. I, in fact, I can't prove anything right now. Things may start going our way now. And if it wasn't for your courage and what you've accomplished undercover, oh, dear man, what have I accomplished? You know all I've done? I just hurt the people who are really close to me in the world. Jerry, I miss, I miss Clarice, and I miss Clarice so much. I don't know if I can take it anymore. Just hang in there. It'll end soon. Now, this thing should have been over a long time ago. And even when it is, I don't think I could ever go back to I've lost my family, Jerry. I don't believe that, and neither should you. It's just my plan just worked a little too well, that's all. What plan? To get you to go check up on Clarice. I she's starting to rely on you a little too much. Jerry, come on, don't start imagining things. Of course we have feelings for one another. We have been friends for a long time, Larry, the three of us. Yeah, look, I know that's how you see it. I just think she sees... More than a friend in you. Mary, she is just confused and very lonely. Yeah, I know. It's nobody's fault but mine. You did what you thought you had to do. And when this is all over, you'll be able to tell Clarice everything. She'll understand that you didn't have a choice in leaving her. That you did it to protect her. But the only way this thing's going to be over is when we take care of Jordan Scott. And even then, I don't know if I can go back to what I had. How are you? I'm fine. I, I would like to see Amanda, please. Oh? Is there a problem? Well, I just put it to bed. It's a little early for that, isn't it? Yes, but... Is she sick? Oh, oh no, she's not as fine, but is she? Are you sure? Of course. Then what is it? She was just tired, that's all. Let me go check on her. Mrs. Curry, don't, 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 please. I'm sorry, Mr. Curry asked me not to allow you to see Amanda unless he's present. He is wrong if he thinks he can get away with this. Hello, Rachel. Hello, Rachel. What do you think you're trying to do? Forbid me to see my own daughter? I would never forbid or prevent you from seeing Amanda. Louise just told me I'm not allowed to see her unless you're here. Well, that's right. Those are my instructions. I want to be here with you, too, when you see Amanda. Hey, I want to talk to you. 
had it with you, Jordan. Hey, I'm gonna have to teach you some manners. Now, why don't you go on out and then uh, come back in? I saw my sister. Oh, that's nice. I think family should be close. I saw what you did to her. We're going to it. Well, she told me she fell down the stairs. Well, you know how it is. Most accidents do happen in the home, they say. Hey, look, Jordan, I'm telling you, you don't ever lay another hand on Blaine again, all right? Okay. What I'm telling you is, what goes on between me and your sister is none of your business. She, she's just a little clumsy. That's all. You know, it's real funny. She never became accident prone until she got involved with you. Well, she's been a little nervous lately. You know how women are. Yeah, I know how you are, too. I know what you are. And I'm telling you, you're never getting away with what you did to Blaine. And I'm telling you, it's none of your business. Now, I don't like the hired help getting too nosy. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Hey, look, Jordan, I hear what you're telling me. Your threats don't scare me, though. Well, if you know me as well as you say that you do, uh, maybe they better. You know, I've been watching your operation for quite some time. You're going to slip up here real soon. I'm going to be there and watch you fall. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. When that day comes, I'll give you a front row seat. Now, you want to get out of here and let me get some work done? I'm telling you, Jordan. Stay away from Blaine. Oh, uh, Larry. I saw Clarice out shopping yesterday. She looks good. Corey was with her, too. That's one handsome little boy you got there. Looks like his mother. Don't you think? I got a few minutes, Jerry. Sure, Clarice. I'm sorry that I, I didn't call you first. Oh, uh, you don't need an appointment to see me. Uh, come on, sit down. Is there something I can do for you? Uh, yeah, there is. I, I finally accepted the fact that my marriage to Larry is over. You don't mean that, Clarice. Now, just give yourself some time and think this through. I have given it time. I, I, I've done nothing but think about it for months. Have you talked to Larry? Well, I've seen him several times, but he never once gave me any reason to think that he was going to come home again. I don't think I care anymore. Of course you care. Jerry, when, when Larry walked out on Corey and me, he walked out on our marriage. At first I thought, you know, he'll cool off, he'll come home. But he changed. He's not the man that I married. Clary, sometimes people go through things and they're not themselves for a while. But sooner or later they come out of it. Jerry, I don't want to wait any longer. I mean, he chose the kind of life that he wants. Give him a chance, Clarice. No, I just, look, I want to be through with this mess, and it's, and Corey, too. I mean, it's not fair for Corey to wait and, and to hope that Larry comes home. Brian has already filed the restraining order that you asked for. Now, it hurt him very much. Well, I didn't know what else to do. I just, I want all this legal stuff to be over with. That's why I, I want you to file for di a divorce right now. I don't want Larry to think that he can just come back in our lives whenever he feels like it. Clarice, as your lawyer and your friend, I am asking you to take it slow. Don't rush into this. But, Jerry, I just told you. I already made up my mind. Look, I only want to do what I think is best for you. What's best for me is a divorce. Uh, and if you're not going to file those papers, then I'll, I'll find another lawyer who will. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Mm -hmm. My darling. Uh, 
I'll be up in a few minutes to tell you your bedtime story. Good night, night, night sweetheart. Why, Mac? Why won't you let me see her alone? Well, well, it's very simple. I don't want you to be tempted to take her from the house. That's more your style, isn't it? Rachel, the only reason I took her from the hospital was because nobody could reach you when she was ready to go. Perhaps they didn't look in the right place. I also think it's much better for her to be in her own home, in her own room, where Louise can be with her all the time and take good care of her. Better care of her than I can. Well, as I remember, Ada couldn't reach you either when she needed you because of Amanda's accident. Don't you imply I was neglecting that child. I left her with two very good babysitters. She could have fallen when I was there. I'm not judging you, Rachel, but it is a fact. That you are judging me and you're wrong. No one, not you, not anyone, can prove that I'm not a good mother. I love my children. No one knows that better than I do, Rachel. But that doesn't mean that I love her any the less. I can give her so much. And I can give her what she needs. She needs her mother now. She needs a mother's care, and that's much more than money can buy. I'm not talking about material things. I was just wondering what would happen if you ever had to make a choice. I wonder what you would do if you had to choose between Amanda and Mitch. Would you put Amanda first? Well, you enjoy this time with Amanda. Because it's not going to last very long, huh? She'll be with me. Don't count on that, Rachel. I'm not going to lose Amanda, too. What are you trying to do, punish me? Has your pride been hurt? Pride has nothing to do with it, Rachel. Mac, I have told Brian I don't want a cent from you, nothing from you. Just please give me my daughter. Don't you know? That child is the most precious part. And the only thing I have from what you and I shared together all those years, you know what all this has done to my relationship with Jamie. And now I realize I'm not going to get to watch and help Matthew as he grows up. Everything that has been dear to me is suddenly gone. And I won't let anyone... Take the manda. I told you before you left me, and I'm telling you again. No one will take Amanda from me. Ever. You look like there's something troubling me. Yes, Jordan, I could say something is troubling me, and I think you're going to find it a little uh, disturbing yourself. Well, what is it? I've been under a lot of pressure lately, Jordan, from a number of people to uh, begin, shall we say, investigations of certain incidents. What incidents? Margot Grove's death, Jerry Grove's accident, the accident at the Cory Docks, the bombing of the complex, not to mention the escort service. I mean, the list goes on and on and on, Jordan, and now. I hear that Blaine has been beaten. Be she fell down the stairs. Yeah, all right. And Matt Corey planted the bomb in his office. I know. Listen, Jordan, I have covered for you in the past. I can't do it anymore. It's gone too far. Well, uh, Colton, I suggest you make yourself useful. I need to remind you that you still have quite a sizable debt here at the arena. Jordan, I can't go on doing nothing. Now, I've got to begin to do so. If, if only a token investigation, something's got to happen. I want you to take no action, token or otherwise. Now, I keep very detailed records on my customers. I'm sorry, Jordan. Yeah, I think you're going to be, Colton. Something I want you to listen to. Business that needs taken care of. Business, huh? Yeah, something of no real importance to both of us, I would suggest. I would also suggest that you find it urgent and worthy of your valuable time. <laughs> All right, Jordan, come on. What is 
this business we've got. We have a certain partnership, one that involves a debt. Well, perhaps it's time to settle that debt. Are you calling my markers, Jordan? You might say that. Uh, all right, how much do I owe? It's a considerable sum, but uh, one I think we can reconcile. Well, I need a little time for this. Uh, I can give you some of it. Please, there's no need to pull out your checkbook. I don't want to force you to come up with all this money. What do you mean? I just perhaps we can settle this in another way with, with no worries. Well, uh, all right, uh, well, what do you have in mind? You could refuse, but I don't think it would be too good for your image if it got out that the district attorney owed a rather sizable gambling debt to you. Could jeopardize your further aspirations. <laughs> all right, Jordan, well, maybe we can work something out. That's what I figured. So, Colton, uh, unless you won't want this to get out, I suggest you use your imagination to appease the concerned citizenry of Bay City. Well, this may end up being your most famous political campaign speech. Well, she makes me mad sometimes. Yeah, everybody thinks that she's so perfect. But she's deliberately trying to just take away any authority I have left at Bravo. Good evening. Good evening. Now I don't have you there to help support me anymore. I don't think my support would count for much these days. Oh, Jane, will you be serious? You know, I spent half my time today just answering questions about you. Questions? Mm-hmm. Everybody's wondering where you are. What'd you tell them? Oh, I made up the story about how you're not feeling well. You know, honey, they all care about you there. They really do. And I don't like having to, to avoid seeing Mac. Why are you avoiding Mac? Because I don't want to tell him any lies. That's how I'm today. We had a long talk. Well, at least you're speaking to somebody. Jamie, look, why don't you open up to me? I feel like I don't even know you anymore. I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe you never have. You know that's not true. Remember? We used to share everything. Come on. Remember? Remember? Oh, Jamie, I want to help you. I'm your wife. And I'm here for you if you need me. Are you? You know I am. Come here. Yeah. When are you going back to the complex? I don't know. Maybe never. You don't mean that. I do mean that. I may never go back again. I don't want to hear that. I just don't want to hear ever again. Yeah. Ever again. It's not important right now. How can you say that? Let's just concentrate on you and me. Okay. Mm. Look, Jamie, don't you see how important it is? We can't throw away everything that we've worked so hard for. Look, I don't want to think about that tonight. Maybe tomorrow will be more important. But right now, the only thing that matters is this. No. No, first, Jamie, first. You've got to promise me, please, promise me that you'll go back to work tomorrow. Come on. Please. Promise. I almost thought you weren't coming back. Sometimes I don't know which is worse. Spending all your time locked away in this office or going out around town on appointments. <laughs> Something wrong? <laughs> sort of. What happened? Well, first, tell me what happened with Colton. Oh, well, Colton is reluctant to investigate Jordan Scott. 
He has got to, Brian. There are too many lives at stake. Well, he says it plain. Claims she had an accident. There's nothing he can do but believe her. Well, then I guess Larry's marriage is going to be Jordan's next casualty. Well, what do you mean? Therese came by today. She wants me to start divorce proceedings immediately. Oh, no. You couldn't put her off? I tried, but she is convinced that Larry deserted both her and Corey. Brian, if we don't get Larry out of that undercover operation soon, I don't think anything is going to be able to put that marriage back together again. If only Colton would listen to reason. You know, Jerry, sometimes I believe that everything that Jamie wrote in that editorial about Zachary Colton may have been all too true. started to worry about me. Mother, I went over to the house to see Amanda. How was your visit? She was darling. Are you happy? She seemed fine. I'm sure she's happy. She adores her father. It's just that I miss her so much. And now Mac won't even let me see her alone. Can you do that? I don't know if he can do that. That's what he's doing. And now he's more determined than ever to get custody of her. All right. We'll fight it. I just can't lose her, Mitch. I just... I just can't lose that little girl. Another.